Hey, V-Fam, welcome out here tonight here at Victory Outreach Chino. We are so excited to have you with us today. As you know, we are in a series called Winning Wednesdays. And so it's such an exciting time that we're having here in our church. We're, we're on the move, and we've been able to see God do so many great things in these past couple weeks, and we're so excited to have you with us for this week. And so... We are in week three. If you haven't been tuning in, then now's your chance to jump in and get caught up. You can go right there on our YouTube channel. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can go ahead and search VO Chino. And you can go and see the past couple weeks that we've been tuning in. We've been uh, stirring up what God's been doing here in our church and seeing what he's doing here in our faith. But like I said, we are in week three. And last week was so amazing. We had Pastor Richard, and he was able to share about a lifestyle of giving. And so uh, we are so excited to see those that have accepted the challenge of what we're doing here in our church. And we're really stepping out in faith. But not only are we stepping out, but God has been able to meet us. So so, so excited to see everyone that's tuning in. Those of you online, we want to see you guys. Tell us where you're tuning in from. Where are you tuning in from? What city? What state? Because we have people tuning in from all over the world. Actually, we see you, Brother Leonard, right there from Victory Outreach Boyle Heights. It's uh, awesome to have you join us. But you are part of our family here at Victory Outreach Chino. So it's such a blessing to be able to see you. It's such a blessing to be able to have you. But we want to know where else you're tuning in from, whether you're uh, from down the street or you're tuning in from across the country. You are part of the family, and we want you to feel like you're here with us today. And so it's been such an awesome time on our winning Wednesdays. I think I was able to even share about what God's been doing in my life as we've been accepting the challenge. But before we even continue tonight, we want to challenge you to go ahead and share this video. Share it with a friend, a family member, maybe someone that really needs uh, their faith to be stretched or to be lifted in the spirit. Go ahead and share it on Facebook, on YouTube. Go ahead and post it uh, on your Instagram. Whatever it is that you're doing, let's go ahead and share it because we don't want to keep to ourselves what God has been able to do in these last couple weeks here on Wednesday nights. And so uh, we have been in a month of stewardship, 
a month of giving because we have come to understand and we've been able to hear some awesome testimonies that our giving begins to unlock the blessings that God wants to outpour upon our lives. And as we trust in God with our finances and we place him first in everything that we receive, we see that he opens up a floodgate, come on, of heaven. And we've been able to hear testimony after testimony of what God's been doing within the members of our church. So go ahead and uh, comment uh, below maybe what God's been doing in your life, how he's been uh, challenging your faith, how we've been growing together here as a church family. But uh, I want to challenge us to really step out. We've been hearing the testimonies once again of everyone that's been stepping out, um, but we want to challenge you once more as well to, to really step out. And so we do have a special speaker here tonight that's going to be uh, giving what God has given unto him. Uh, you can go ahead and see in the comment section, but let's blow it up. Maybe throughout the night, we want you to feel like you're right here in the room. So we're going to be interacting with you. We're going to be spending some time with you, but we want to hear from you as well. We don't just want to talk to you, but we want to talk with you. So comment down below. Maybe you have a prayer request. Maybe you have a praise report of how God's been able to impact you through our online services and our VFAM. So uh, let us know what you're thinking, how you're doing, we want to pray with you, pray for you, and also praise the Lord for what he's been able to do in your life. We're able to see, okay, we see you right there, Francis, right there in Norwalk and Covina. All right. And, and so we're excited to have you there with us. But we know there's many more tuning in all across, uh, man, maybe the country, uh, across the state. But it's such an exciting time to be in the house of the Lord. But you're not left out. You're here with us. You're part of this family. VFAM, you are so important to us. You're so important to us. So we just want to spend this time with you and let you know that you're loved. You're prayed for, uh, you're welcome, but we want to go ahead and have you join us. So we're going to head inside and we're going to get into a time of praise. I can't hear you. Who's ready to worship the Lord here this evening? Welcome to our fire, power, and prayer where we are in week three of our winning team uh, theme for the month and I hope you guys are ready to worship the Lord here and get refueled on a midweek service. VFAM, once again, we welcome you out. Share this link and invite someone. Are you guys ready? Come on. Are you guys ready? Come on, let's give God some praise here this evening. Lift your hands up right now and just thank Him. Lord, we thank you for tonight. We come ready to release and praise your name. We love to call your name in something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name, your great name. We love to call your name. Bye. 
Join with us. Come on. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power. Bless the Lord at all times, 
church, one body, one unit, sing and let's do it together. He's been better than good to me, sing. Cause he's been better than good to me. Cause you've been better than good to me. Cause you've been better than good to me. How many believe that he's been good to you? He's been better than good to me. So, so good. You've been better than good to me. Cause you've been better than good to me. When I didn't deserve it. Cause you've been better than good to me. Testimony right here. I should have been dead. Give it to you, Lord. We give you our lives. You've been better than good, yeah. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good, You've been better than good, yeah. You've been better than good. So, so good, yeah. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. And we give you praise.
Bible says that when two or three are gathered, He is in the midst. And all we can say is thank you. Hallelujah. Which means praise God. Just lift your hands. If He's rescued your life, lift your hands and join with us. You have rescued my life, and you have rescued my life, and I'm never going back. Lift your hands and sing. You have rescued my life, and you have rescued my life, and I'm never going back. I want to do something a little different. I want all the men to get ready to sing that together. Just the men. Are you guys ready? I want you to lift your hands with me, men. And thank God. Join with me right now. Here it goes. Oh, you rescue. Nice and loud, men. Come on. And you have rescued. Let me hear you. Sing it again, you have. No, never. Now give him praise, man. Give him praise. Give him praise. Now, ladies, you're next. All the women, I want you to lift your hands. And I want you to sing this nice and loud. And remember where he's brought you from. Sing it again. Come on, ladies. Here we go. You have.
Because my response is, my response is, hallelujah, and you're my redeemer, hallelujah, sing my response is, my response is, hallelujah, and you're my redeemer. You have rescued my life. Thank you, Lord. And you have rescued my life. And declare it now. And I'm never going back. Oh, Lord. And you have rescued my life. And you have rescued my life. And I'm never Sing it again. See, with this song, as we were singing it, a, a portion of scripture that came to mind is in Luke. 17 verse 11 Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem right and he saw 10 look at every tell him 10 men who had leprosy and they stood at a distance calling out in a loud voice Jesus master have pity on us like many of us here tonight you cried out to God in a jail cell. You cried out in a desperate time. You cried out to God and said, Jesus, have mercy on me. Have pity on me. If you help me out, come on. If you help me out, if you get me out of this, if you come through for me. Oh, just me? Let's keep it real. I'm going to serve you, God. Right? Then he says in verse 14, when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. And verse 15, and one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God with a loud voice. I wonder if we have the one here in this room that says, I'm going to praise God with a loud voice because he has rescued my life. He has delivered me. He has set me free. I once was lost. I once was with no hope, with no purpose. But then I met a man named Jesus. I met a man named Jesus and he changed me. He delivered me. 
delivered me. He set me free. And because he, because of what he's done in my life, I'm here to worship God. I'm here to declare his goodness. I'm here to declare, Jesus, I worship you. Not for what you can do for me, but simply for who you are. Is there anybody here that says, Jesus, I'm grateful. Just you guys. I want to hear you guys. There you go. You have rescued my life. Someone, that's your declaration here tonight. You're not going back the same. You're not walking out that door the same way that you walked in. I said, you're not walking out that door the same way that you walk in. Do you receive that here tonight? Do you receive that here tonight? Come on, let's give Jesus the biggest praise that you can give him. Here tonight, come on, I said your best praise, the biggest praise, he deserves it, he deserves it, come on, welcome to a fire, power, and prayer, we're on the move, Victory Outreach Mother Church is on the move, on behalf of our pastors, we want to welcome you out to our midweek service, and this is the place to be. So if you're here in the room, I want to encourage you, text somebody, call somebody, says, hey, you need to be here. Online, you still have an opportunity to share this. Amen. Isn't it awesome to be in the house of the Lord here? I, what I want to know, do we have any winners here in this house? I said, do we have any winners here in this house? This is week three of Winning Wednesdays here, and God's been moving in a powerful way. We're going to be hearing some testimonies and a little bit of what God's been doing. At this time, I want to encourage you to step out of your seat. Greet somebody, v fam. We love you. Welcome to our midweek service. God bless you. All right, well, while they're greeting right here inside the sanctuary, we want to take this opportunity one more time to greet you there. All those that are watching here with our VFAM, we see all the names right there in the chat. And we hope that you're having a great time with us so far. Man, the worship was so powerful and the presence of God has been so heavy. But we know that the presence of God is not limited just to this four walls that we have here, but we know that God is right there touching you right there in your homes. But we want you to feel like you're right here in the room because you are. You're here with us, and so we want to encourage you once more to go ahead and subscribe and, and join us as we continue to worship God. But right there in the chat, we want to see where you're tuning in from. We want to see where you're at. Okay, I see Norma from Vic, uh, from Whittier right there. All right, we got, I think that's Pastor Nick. Awesome to have you with us. Oh, wait, do we see Monica all the way from Kansas? Monica's blowing up the chat right there. Well, it's so awesome to have you with us. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to put up a QR code because we want you to be an official V Fam member. We want you to be an official V Fam member so you can be with us throughout the weeks. Tune in whenever we go live and be able to see what we're doing here in the house of God because you're a part. We care about you so much. We're always praying for you, but it's awesome to be able to have you, to be able to share with you and just share the love of God with each other. So we have such an awesome time planned ahead of us for tonight. Um, so once again, I do want to say 
Hello Victory Outreach Chino, for those of us that are uh, watching on VFAM, but even those of you that are right there in service, if we can begin to make our way back to our seats because we have something so amazing in store for us right now, so we can start to make our way back to our seats. Awesome. I know we love greeting here in the house of God, but we have a couple interviews that we want to take the advantage of doing as we are in Winning Wednesdays. We have a couple of MVPs here with us, and so I want to take this time to invite over Brother Angel and Sister Christina. Come on, let's give them a round of applause right there. Well, I got to share it before we jump into it. I love Brother Angel and Sister Christina. Man, when I even came into the church when I was in the men's home, actually... Brother Angel would come over and feed us right there at the home. He's always got some, some steak, right, some, some uh, shrimp, whatever it is, you know. But they weren't also just feeding us uh, food, but we would be hitting the streets constantly. So I've been able to see what God's been able to do in their life, the growth that has been taking place. But I don't want to be the only one to share it. And so tonight we want to interview them because they are a couple of our MVPs that we have here at Victory Outreach. You know, it shows. I think everybody knows it. But for some of you that may not know them, we're going to be able to hear a little bit about it. So, uh, Brother Angel, how long have you guys been coming to our church? Uh, we came in nine years ago, uh, broken. Um, I, was, I was about to lose my family. I was on a lot of drugs and gangs. I put the gang first and my drugs, and um, it was bad. And uh, my kids weren't talking to me. But then, man, God came into our lives, and now we've been, we've been, we've been here for nine years. And, and Faithful. Uh, families connected, and... and we're all connected in the church, and we're all doing something for God, and, and, and God's been on the move. Amen, amen. I've definitely been able to witness it, and I know many of our church members have been able to witness it and see what God can do in the life of those that are willing to trust in him fully. Um, but we know that you guys are givers, givers of your time, givers of whatever you guys have. I know you, you guys would, man, Angel would give the shirt off his back. Actually, I think I might have seen him do it one time, right? While we were out there hitting the streets, he was like, hey, brother, you need this? You know, but it's been so amazing to see it. But Sister Christina, why is giving so important to you? Um, for us, I know um, the importance of giving, it's been able to help us grow our faith. You know, um, when we first came in nine years ago, we almost lost everything. You know, we lost, we almost lost our house. We couldn't pay our mortgage for two years. We lost our business. Um, we almost lost our cars. There was times where we didn't have food and, and we, you know, our electricity was going to get taken off, turned off. And so I know, so the importance of giving what we've learned um, in, in that time in the hard season was that God is faithful. Even the little that we had, we, we, decided to start giving tithes. So even when we didn't have it's anything, amazing. we started giving our tithes and um, we started seeing God um, do miracles in our lives and with our family. You know, I remember a time um, where we were going to lose our house. We couldn't pay our mortgage and we were giving. We were giving, we were being faithful. We didn't have gas sometimes. And I remember one time somebody came and, and they gave us money and they said, the Lord put this in our heart. And they gave us money to put gas in our car. And then I came home one day and they um, forgave the mortgage on our second oh, wow. mortgage. Our second, they completely forgave it. I didn't have to do anything. And then we were Come able on, give to- Give God a round of applause for that. We were able to um, keep our home. Um, we were able to modify two years without paying mortgage. Oh, wow. And we were able to keep our house. So through that season of our hardship, we gave by faith and God came through every time. Man, look at that. Let's give God one more round of applause for that. Man, uh, little is much in the hands of a big God is what I'm hearing from you. And it's been such a blessing to be able to hear that story. And it encourages me. And I hope that it's encouraging some of us that we can trust in God. We, even when it feels like maybe uh, we don't have it or maybe when we feel like uh, we're not going to make it through. I, I'm, I'm hearing that we can trust in God in those seasons. I think even the, it points to that widow with the two mites. And, he, and Jesus turned to his disciples and said, man, this widow, though she has given little, it's all that she had to live off of. And she's given more than those that have given uh, much in the eyes of other people. And so you guys have definitely been doing that. But we have been able to see the reward that God has definitely been able to do and give upon your lives, not just financially, but also in your family, seeing them all come to church and serving God. So we can believe in God, not just for financial blessings, but miracles to take place in our family's lives as well. And so uh, it's just such a blessing to have you guys uh, share with us. But 
we really want to hear how good has God been lately? Come on. I know you guys got something to tell us. Man, God is good. Um, like, like you heard, we're messed up and we're always going through divorce, losing everything. But now, man, with, through this ministry, our pastors, the leaders here, the family here, uh, one thing I want to do for sure is make sure, uh, just tell everybody, open your hearts and, and get connected uh, in this ministry. It's a beautiful family. And as you can see, what God has done in our life, you can do in your guys' life. But um, now God is moving. He's opening up doors. You know, we're, our pastor's ta- uh, speaking mega. So we got to be mega-minded and we're stepping out so that the Lord can step in. Uh, we're starting our business. We had a business. I smoked it up. And, and, and uh, now God has opened up doors. Uh, we just purchased a van. We got our business license. Ooh. Our family is getting behind us. And, and man, you know, we're going to be able to, you know, bless, you know, take, uh, you know, pay back to the Lord and, 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 and be able to help out and just take care of our family and, and, and build the building next door. That, and, you know, just do what, what God has done oh, for us. That's vision for right there. Amen. Amen. That's vision right there. So we just want to thank you guys for, for joining us tonight. And thank you for the testimony that God has been able to do through your lives. So thank you once again. And uh, tonight, man, it's just such a blessing to see that there are real life testimonies here in the house of God of what he is able to do uh, in and through those that really trust in him. But it was amazing to hear, like, they, they were so blessed by what God has done that they couldn't wait to give back. Even in sharing, it, he's like, I can't wait to build the building next door. I can't wait to uh, invest in other people's lives. But that's why God gives to us. He gives to those that are generous in heart. And so we are in a month of stewardship and we We want to uh, let everyone see that God is willing to give to those that stand with an open hand policy. And so I want to encourage us to give uh, with a cheerful heart in this season, and we'll see that we could never outgive God. And so we want to go ahead and head back into the sanctuary, and we're going to continue with our service. Lord, come on, let's put our hands together. Powerful testimony. Come on, give Jesus a good, good hand of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to get ready to receive our tithes and our offering. And I have just one question for you. How many want to be somebody that can testify of God's goodness and grace? If you notice, all these testimonies have something in common. Number one, that they put God first. Amen. They just said, you know what, God, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to just trust you. I'm going to just put my confidence in you. Secondly, you know what? They stepped out by faith. They didn't analyze their their books. Hello, somebody. They didn't look at it and say, well, let me check it out. Let me see if I can really, you know, take. No, no, no. They, They said, you know, forget what the books say. Forget what the bank says. Forget what my account says. You know what? I'm just going to step out by faith. And then, hello, somebody say, and then, and then they saw come, God come through in ways they didn't even imagine. Hello, somebody. To see their whole family safe. To see their business be restored unto them. Hello. Huh? To see God, you know what, say, you know what, I, I, I'm even going to wipe out your second mortgage. Mm, 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 mm. All that took place in Angel and Christine's life. Why? Because they put their trust and their confidence in God. And they said, you know what? It's time to take a challenge. I'm going to take the challenge. It's time to step out by faith. I'm going to step out by faith. It's time to, you know, show off to the world that I serve a God that is able to provide exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I think or ask, you know what, it's that time again, then I'm going to take this step, I'm going to take this challenge, I'm going to go for broke, and I'm going to be able to testify of how God came through. And this is why we challenge our people, because we want to see you bless. We want to see you come into the miracle territory that many of us have entered into, and we're still entering into. Somebody say amen. We haven't stopped. We started at 10%, but then many of us took it up to 12%, 15%, 20%. Why? Because the church needs to fight. No, 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 no. (laughs) Say no. (laughs) It's because we have our confidence in God. 
and we've seen him be faithful in the little, be faithful, and you know what, at our starting point. And listen, God will meet us when we take the next level, to step into the next level. And so I want to challenge you today. I, there's an envelope right in front of you. Should be one in front of the seat in front of you. There should be one on, on every seat in the front row. And I want to challenge you if you still have not taken this winning team challenge. How many want to be a winner? I said, How many want to be a winner? Then listen, this is your opportunity to step into miracle territory and say, You know what, God? I'm going to take this 90-day challenge, and I'm going to start at 10%, and I'm going to believe you to turn my finances around. I'm going to believe you to turn my family around. I'm going to believe you to turn my business around. I'm going to believe you to do the miraculous. What I cannot do, what others could not do for me, God, I'm going to trust you and believe you that you're going to do it for me. And those of you uh, watching via uh, the Internet, listen, we haven't forgotten you. We want you to take this challenge with us as well. It's a step of faith. And so we want you to, there's a QR code that you can scan. There's also you can text VO to 45777. We want you to take this challenge as well. Listen, we are a winning team, and we want to see you win more and more in the Lord. And the only way to do that is if we step out by faith. So let's be winners. Look at somebody in town. Let's be winners. And let's take another step. And our level of faith. And God will bless you. God will multiply your seed. God will bring that second rain that brings the harvest upon your life and your family life when you and I put our trust in him. So are you ready? You ready, winning team? Why don't we all stand? What a powerful testimony. Every time I hear these testimonies, I get stirred. I get it, I, it just, just stirs me up because God is faithful, God is good, and God is able. He says, I am able to provide seed to the sower so that you may be generous on every occasion. Hello, somebody. I never want to be found broke in the house of God. I want to have something always available to offer to my God. And say, God, you know what? This is what I have, and I offer it to you. It's my best, God. And I want to bless you because you've been good to me. So I'm going to ask you to lift your gifts from all over this place. And I want to just pray that God will bless your sowing, your seed that you're sowing today. Father in heaven, we come before you. We thank you for the privilege to give unto you. I pray for every winner in your house and those that are watching via the internet. And Lord, my God, during this season of, of, Lord, stepping into miracle territory, that, Lord, my God, there will be so many testimonies, Lord, my God, from your people, Lord, of how, Lord, they, they took this step of faith, and, Lord, you did beyond, beyond their, their asking, beyond their imagination. And, God, you poured out so much that, Lord, they truly cannot contain it. And, Lord, they're so grateful, God, and so moved by you. Bless every seed. Bless every family. Bless every viewer. And, God, I pray that, Lord, you be glorified, and Lord, in every seed that is sown. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to ask you to bring your seed this morning, this evening. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. While they're bringing their tithes and offering, I just want to make one announcement. And this is in regards to everyone that is a faithful tither, everyone that has stepped out by faith and taken on this 90-day challenge. And it's not too late even 
to take on the 90 day challenge and become part of what I'm going to announce and that is that this coming Monday we are having a special tithers gathering right here in our church amen this coming Monday come on give Jesus a hand amen and listen we we want to invite you those of you that have been faithful those of you that have taken the 90 day challenge and then even those of you that say I still want to is it too late it is not too late just take the challenge and you'll receive you know what a, 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 a link via your phone and listen we want to invite you out this coming Monday so come on out to our tithers these uh, gathering this coming Monday praise the Lord and with that pay attention to the screens for video announcements Good evening. Welcome to our midweek service. We have some exciting things taking place within our church. Here are your weekly announcements. We will be continuing our grief share that's taking place upstairs in our main conference room. You can join us in person or via Zoom. Every Friday at 7.30 p.m. right here at our church, we have a night of prayer taking place upstairs in our loft. Every Sunday morning at 9.15 to 9.45 a.m., we would like to invite you to the altars for a time of prayer. At 9.45 a.m., we will be going live with our new online experience. Follow us on all our social media platforms. We have Facebook, Instagram, and also our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be notified every time we go live. Did you know we also have a podcast that's made available just for you? We upload all the messages that are preached right here in our main sanctuary on Spotify and Apple Podcasts so you don't miss a message. Thank you for joining us today. We are a people that you can call family and a place that you can call home. God, God bless, bless you. you. You are the future missionaries. You may not believe me, but the day is going to come where you're going to start being the gang leaders in your church, and you're going to start getting on planes and going to other parts of the world, and you're going to be the ones to go to the UTCs. You are the future of this ministry. does not come but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. Come on, are we still excited here tonight? Let's all stand. Come on, let's give the Lord a good, good hand. Give him our best. God is moving in a tremendous way in Victory Outreach, Mother Church. And also, soon and very soon, we're going to Boston. We have Boston Crusade. So excited to be for God so loved Boston. It's going to be so, so awesome. So we want to represent strong and just continue to to reach the city of Boston because I mean, know oh, it's God's timing there in that city. It truly is. And God wants to raise up some a powerful church there. It's going to impact all of New England. And so where the where's the third wave at? Come on, third wave. If you say I'm part of the third wave, make it a point to go to Boston. Expose yourself to what God is doing. It was a multi-regional plant and that team is a big part of its third wave and so you don't want to miss out. It's going to be life-changing. It's going to be two powerful weeks. Uh, first, we're going to have our international gang overseer, Pastor Ryan. Arganzoni Kuklinski is going to be speaking the second week. Evangelist Tim Story. It's going to be so, so awesome. 
So continue to keep that in prayer as well, that God will just continue to raise up a powerful church. Amen. If you could please take hold of your Bibles at this time and turn to Luke chapter 5. Take hold of your Bibles, your Bible app. And as you turn there, I want to thank God for my salvation. I'm truly, truly grateful for what God has done in my life, his, his mercy and his grace and his, his keeping power. And I've said it many times, if there's any people that should be grateful for what God has done in their lives, it is the ministry of Victory Outreach. Can I get an amen? amen. God has been so good, so good to us. Also, our founders, how many love our founders? We have some awesome, tremendous founders, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie, continue to lead the way, continue to trailblaze for us. And they are just so awesome and they continue to, to make sure that we stay in alignment with what God is doing in Victory Outreach International. And also our pastors, how many love our shepherds, Pastor Sonny Jr., Sister Kim, our coaches. There's a lot of great pastors out there, but I truly believe without a shadow of a doubt that we have the best. We have some awesome, awesome pastors, world-class leaders, and what a privilege we have to be under their leadership. And also I'm a product of the gang, the God's Anointed Now Generation. It's a young adult and student ministry, and God is doing something so tremendous there in the gang. And if you're a young adult or a student, you're young at heart, every Sunday at 6 p.m. we come here in the church, and God has been doing miraculous things. So if you want to catch the third wave with us, you're more than welcome to come on out and see what God is doing. And last but not least, my wife, Lex, we just celebrated two years of marriage. So, so awesome to have a great, tremendous wife that loves the Lord. And some people may know, some may not know that. I just ran the L.A. Marathon. <laughs> just ran the L.A. Marathon, and I'll share more about that later. But it was very, very challenging. And uh, my wife was a soldier. She got up with me at 3.30 in the morning, took me to Union Station to catch a shuttle. And, you know, I'm in the house of God, so say be real. At least it should be real in the house of God. You know, my expectation when I was just going to finish triumphantly and just be able to come and testify how I just ran the whole race so strong, but that was not the truth. It was very, very challenging, very difficult, and actually after the race, as we got home, I couldn't even walk. My wife had to pick me up and roll me into the house. It was very, very difficult, but I'm so, so glad I was able to finish, and it gave me a new perspective on when we say that the Christian walk is not a sprint. It is a marathon, and so truly, it truly is. Uh, Luke chapter 5, do you have it? We'll be starting there in verse 1. The Bible reads like this. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. And he got into one of the, into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked them to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep. Say, into the deep. Into the deep water. And he let down his nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish and their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners into the boat to come and help them. And then they came and filled both boats so, filled, so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats out up from up of the shore and left everything and followed him. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you for your, your presence that's here. It's so evident that it's here, Lord. And I pray that you will just take complete control that this word that you gave me for your people will truly penetrate their hearts, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we will continue to be the people you've called us to be, that we will walk in victory, that we will be those winners and be those champions that you've called us to be, Lord. So I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to continue to do in each and every one of our lives. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. And we all say, Amen. you may be seated at this time. Now, we are in the, in the month of March, and for those that are sports fans, that means uh, March Madness. I'm going to be watching March Madness, right, a college basketball tournament. 
And this tournament has been awesome. It's been amazing. There's been some major upsets and underdogs winning it, right? I, I believe, uh, I'm a USC fan, but I believe UCLA is still in the tournament, right? UCLA is still in the tournament. They're, they're, playing, they're playing Gonzaga. So I know Pastor Al has really, really been, been praying. And if they win, they'll be going to the, the Elite Eight. Now, the main objective for any college basketball team is to cut the nets. Say, cut the nets. And that's actually the, the title of my message here this evening. See, cutting down the nets is a, celebrate, a, a tradition of celebration in basketball where a coach or player removes the net of the, back, of the backboard after winning a game. In college basketball, it's usually done after winning a conference tournament, a regional title, or a national championship game. Now, in the 1980s, there was a coach that coached NC State. His name was Jim Valvano. Many people know him as Jimmy V. Jimmy V, when he, he passed away due to cancer, but during, you know, every so often on ESPN, you'll see the Jimmy V Foundation. That goes towards uh, raising finances for, for cancer research. And he was a visionary coach, very visionary coach. And he had many practices with his team, right? I'm sure there was practices uh, as far as conditioning, right, doing suicides, right, uh, uh, going over different plays or defensive schemes or going over different scenarios that may arise throughout the course of a season. <clears throat> but there was one particular practice where he would tell all the players to show up, meet, meet him there at the gym, and they would show up and there would be no basketballs. There'd be no drills. All they would see is just basketball nets, courts with nets, and giant golden scissors. That was it. And what Jimmy Veed would do is he would have each player hoist one another and have them practice cutting down the nets. Each player would take turns cutting down the nets. And then finally, the Jimmy V would cut down the nets, and, and this would be recorded, and after that, they would all watch it together, and, 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 and this coach was envisioning his team saying that we are going to win the national championship. We are going to win the national championship, and I know that this is the team that is going to do it, but in order for this to happen, you need to see it. See, he conditioned his coach mentally to become winners, to become champions. And in the year 1983, the NC Wolfpack, they defied the odds. They truly defied the odds. They, they were a sixth seed in the tournament. There, no one gave them a chance to win the national championship. But game after game, they would win, and they would advance, and they would advance, and they would advance. And finally, they find themselves in the national championship. They're there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. They're, they're playing Houston. And Houston was a huge, huge favorite. Houston, they had uh, NBA stars like Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler. And, and this team actually had the nickname, the, the sports magazine gave them a nickname as, a, as a, uh, the five slamma jamma because all five of the members of the team would just dunk the ball. They moved at such a fast pace. And people were saying that if NC was going to, NC State was not going to win this game. The, the day they win this game, well, elephants will start driving and, and trees will start tap dancing. There's no way that they're going to win. But there was a team that they believed in themselves and they believed in what their coach said. They said, we didn't come all the way here to lose. We are going to cut the nets, defying all the odds, the, the defying what the news reporter said. They, they believed their coach and they left that gym. They left Left that stadium champions because they believed in what their coach said. They had the right mindset and they believed the instructions. And they believed that they came together as a team that they would be successful. Now going back to our opening text, this is Luke's story of Jesus calling the, the, the first disciples. It, it's unique amongst the Synoptic Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels are the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which describe events from a similar point of view as a contrast with that of John. You see, Simon had been fishing all night with no success, a, a long day at work, and now he finds himself towards the evening cleaning his nets. And, and Jesus gets into the boat and tells Simon to go a little from the shore. And Simon did what Jesus had asked. 
Now, Luke does not tell us what Jesus taught the crowds in the morning. The focus is on what follows. Jesus tells Simon to go into the deep and let down his nets for a catch. Now, Simon was at a crossroad. He, he had a decision to make. He was a seasoned and experienced fisherman. And in the natural, it did not make sense to let out his nets. But his response was, Master, we have worked all night and have caught nothing. But if you say so, I will let down my nets. And we all know what happens next. No, not next. The, the nets were so full they began to break. The boats were so full that they began to sink. And Simon is overwhelmed, understanding that he is in the presence of a divine power. He responds by falling on his knees and begging, saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. But Jesus tells him, do not be afraid from now on. You will be a fisher of men. You see, although Simon, Peter, James, and John had experienced the greatest catch of their fishing career, they had left those boats behind and followed Jesus. There was a shift from what was priority. Was, at that time, catching those fish were priority, but it shifted and saying, no, 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 no. Jesus is the priority. Some of you may be in that place in your life where, where Jesus is a priority in your life, but, but he needs to be the priority. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. We need to seek God first. We need to put him first in our lives. We allow him to direct our path. We, we keep our eyes on him. And no matter what's coming our way, no matter if we don't understand what's taking place, we continue to put our trust in the master's hand, knowing that he's the potter and we're the clay. As long as we allow him to mold us and shape us and equip us and prepare us, you and I will be champions. Is there anyone here tonight that wants to cut the nets? Say, cut the nets. You see, Jesus wanted to grow the mindset and shift the mentality of these early disciples. Not looking through the eyes of the natural, but giving them a, a clear vision to see the supernatural. Right? Our pastor, he started the new year right with clear vision 2023. When we have a clear vision. Pick, we see the big picture. We have clear vision and we have understanding. We continue to put our trust in God knowing that he is the one that's leading us. In the natural at times, it will not make sense. In the natural at times, it may seem bleak. But we walk through the eyes of faith. Say faith. faith. This ministry was built of people that walked by faith. This ministry was built of people that had a spirit of generosity. That's a sign of revival is people that are generous. When we have a generous spirit, we release what's in our hands because we don't release what's in our hands. God releases what's in his. And many of us have been fortunate to, to come into this church and, and, and to come and to, to get established in the faith. And, and there was many people that, that sacrificed throughout the, these years of ministry. And they, they sacrificed to be able to see us get here in the city of Chino. And, and we've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. But, but for those that you've been here 10 years or less, now it's our turn. Now it's our turn to have a generous spirit. There's still some buildings that still need to be built. There, there's still more things that... God wants to do, and, and, and I wonder if we have some people here tonight that say, God, I'm going to leave everything behind and follow you, that my life is not my own, my time, my talent, my treasure, my gifts, everything that's within me belongs to you. <laughs> say, cut the nets. Jesus wanted to grow their mentality. See, Jesus already knew what was going to take place, but he needed them to step out and trust him at his word. You see, successful team players know how to take heed to good instruction. That's the type of mindset we need to have is saying, God, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you. And, and I'm going to trust the leadership that you put over my life. And, and I'm going to take heed. And, and I'm going to glean from that wisdom so I don't make the same mistakes that some people have made. And, and I don't want to have to learn things the hard way. So, so I want to have understanding. And, and God, get, don't give me manly wisdom. Give me your wisdom. See, there's many people in, in, this, in this generation that they're very smart, but they lack wisdom. And, and, and you and I, especially this third wave, let, let's, not, let's not be unwise and not tap into the wealth 
of wisdom that we have here in this house. We have the three generations represented in this house, the pioneer Joshua and the third wave, and, and we need it to gleam from that. We need to cling to it because we are a multi-generational church, multi-ethnicities. We, we, we may have different backgrounds. We, we may have different age brackets, but we have one vision, and we have one purpose, and that is to reach the world for Jesus. Do you still believe that we can reach the world for Jesus? We do it together as successful team players. But you've got to have the right mindset. The Bible reads there in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, that for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Right? Henry Ford once said that whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. You see, you and I, we have the victory. See, once we gave our lives over to Jesus, we joined the winning side. Maybe you come from backgrounds where, where you didn't feel like a winner. But if you're part of this church and you're part of the body of Christ, you are a winner. You are a champion. You have a role to play here on this team. We, we, we want to embrace you. We, we have a jersey ready for you to put on. But it's time for all of us to come together collectively in one mind, in one accord, so that we can win championships. <laughs> Putting our lives in the hands of God. So I know Pastor going to talk on Sunday about the spiritual gifts. Many we have different gifts, and God has given us. Man, we got to allow God to take complete control. Can I get an amen here tonight? Amen. What we also need to do if we're going to cut the nets is, in order to be a winning team, is we need to work hard and have team chemistry. The Bible reads there in Proverbs chapter fourteen, verse twenty-three, that all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. See, these early disciples knew how to work hard. They were fishermen. That trade, they, they got up in the early in the morning and, and they left late at night, day, day in and day out. You see, Jesus, he, he picked people that knew how to work. We got to be willing to work hard. We, we don't want microwave results. We, many times we want things fast. We want the fastest phone, right? We, we want things instantly. We, we want that top ramen, and we start looking at the microwave, and it, it's, it's three minutes. It's the longest three minutes of our lives, right? But what I, what, 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 what I, I know what our pastor desires is, yes, yes, there's acceleration, and, and yes, we want to move fast, but, but besides moving fast, we want to go far, and so at times it may seem like we're going slower, but, but we're doing it together. And if we all buy in, if we all join the winning team, you and I will go further. Is there anybody here that wants to go further? These men knew how to work. Jesus knew if they were able to catch fish that same way, that same attitude, that they were going to catch people. You see, any winning team has to be willing to practice and put in the work. And I'm here to declare to you tonight that don't marry a title. Marry the role. Titles may change. But there's people that they marry the title. And they'll only do things if they have that title. I'm a firm believer that you should already be moving with or without the title. The title does not make the person. You can give somebody a title, but you can't give them influence. That comes from God. God is the one that raises up and sits down. Don't look for man's approval. Continue to run the race. Walk the walk that God has called you to run. And say, no, 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 no. My title may change, but my role never changes never changes. I am a team member in Victory Outreach Mother Church. Whatever my role is, whether it's seen seen, whether it's popular or unpopular, whatever is needed, I'm willing to do it because I to win. Is there anyone here that says, I'm going to marry the role and saying, Pastor, Sister Kim, whatever is needed here in the house, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to contribute my time, my talent, my treasure. I'm going to give my tithe. I'm going to give my pledge. I'm not going to do it with the duty. I'm going to do it with the delight. It's a delight to give. It's a pleasure to give because I understand that without God, we would have nothing in the first place. We need to marry the role. 
like I said, the, the title may change, but whatever we role we play, role we play is vital to the success of the overall team. See, Kobe Bryant once said that I'll do whatever it takes to win games. Whether it's waving a towel, handing a cup of water to a teammate, or hitting the game-winning shot. You see, a team player, a team member is selfless. You see, it doesn't matter who takes the shot as long as the team wins. See, on this team, we don't need all-stars. We don't need us, but rather we need MVPs that make those around them better. Working together cohesively, focused on the big picture and accomplishing what God has called us to do. Like I said, we are a, a very unique church. We are a movement. We're not a monument. We are a movement. And yes, we are the oldest church in Victory Eyes, but we're not an old church. We are not merely surviving, but we are thriving. And the reason we're thriving is because we're working together. And I truly believe this without a shadow of a doubt. I, I truly believe that God has called us to be a model, not just in Victory Eyes, but in the body of Christ. I truly believe we're going to have different ministries come and see and witness what's taking place. They're going to see how do you get all these generations working together? How are they working together in unity? How, how are they all focused? How are they all vision driven? How, how, how is there so much unity in that house? And they're going to want to gleam and they're going to want to learn from us. They're going to take that back to their church. Do you believe that here tonight? We need team members here tonight that make a declaration, like Sister Kim talked about, to carry the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And at times it may be challenging. Can I keep it real? It may be difficult at times. But we continue to seek the face of God. We continue to allow the Holy Spirit to take control and say, Holy Spirit, do whatever you need to do in my life. Whatever you got to remove from my life or if you need to convict me, whatever, whatever you need to do in my life, I, 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 I want to be a sweet aroma to God. I, I, want my, I want to reflect Christ and the way I carry myself day in and day out, not just here at the church, but there at home and there at work and there how I, how I handle business. I want to make sure that when people see me, they see Christ. Is there anyone else like that here tonight? Also, for, in order for us to cut the nets, we need to be willing to go the extra mile. Say the extra mile. And I believe they have a picture here on the screen. They're going to cue it right now. I just, like I said, I just ran the L.A. Marathon. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Sponsor me for Run for Hope. Come on. That was the real Run for Hope, 26.2 miles. And you see me smiling because the race is over. Come on, somebody. It was very challenging, I'm telling you. The, the first half of the marathon, I, I felt great. I was running, drinking water, and electrolytes, and they were giving oranges and bananas and pretzels, and I was just taking it all. It was like Costco, just getting free samples, getting free samples, right? So I'll eat it later, doing what I needed to do. I, I trained prior, but once I got to like mile 14, mile 15, it it started getting a little challenging. I started, I started feeling it in my body. My legs were hurting. My legs were locking. And then part of me was like, man, okay, I'm already halfway done. But the other part of me is I still got 13 more miles to go, right? So, okay, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pace myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish the race, right? I'm, I'm running. Then I get to mile 16, mile 17. And then around mile 18, I, I felt like somebody grabbed my calf. I literally thought somebody grabbed my calf. It was, it was messing with me. I, I looked around and no one was there. It was, I was running a hill and my calves were just aching and just cramping up. And I had to think, oh, my God, I, I've come too far to go back now. There's no way I'm going to go back to church and say I did not finish. Come on. No way. It's not, not going to happen. 
but I'm running, and all these different things are coming through my mind, and there was a point in the race where I literally had to stop and, and stretch a little bit, and there was somebody that was a very experienced runner, and he was telling a few of us, he says, do not stop. No matter what you're feeling, continue to go forward. No matter, no matter how you're feeling, continue to go forward. There's somebody here tonight that you find yourself in a place where you have stopped. There's, you, 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 you've, you've experienced some pain in your life, and there's certain things that are keeping you from getting back in the game. I'm here to tell you, keep walking. Keep pressing towards the mark. Keep running. You and I have come too far to go back now. God has done too much in our lives for us to go we are a new creation. We have been reconciled. We have been redeemed. We have the victory. So now we come to church with a smile. Now we have expectation and anticipation. We can come and we can run. We can, we can battle because we know, we know that we have the victory. So keep running, keep running, keep running because you and I have a world to reach. It's time to cut the nets. Say cut the nets. Say cut the nets. Say cut the nets. Willing to go the extra mile. You've heard it said there's always room on the extra mile. Right? Pastor tells a story when he was playing baseball. When, when everyone else was done, he would continue to run laps. There's always room on the extra mile. Run the race God has called you to run. Don't focus on what everyone else is doing. Be who God has called you to be. Step by step, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, keep running. Because little becomes much, which becomes many, which leads to mega. Do I have any mega people here tonight? Say, I'm going to be faithful in the little. I'm going to be faithful in the little, knowing that it leads to many, which leads to much, to many, to mega. I'm going to be that mega leader. I'm going to allow God to expand me. I'm going to freely give whatever God has called me to give. Simon, John, and James, they left everything and followed Jesus. They left the fish behind and followed the master. See, when we go the extra mile, we are stretching ourselves to have that generous spirit. We need to be a people that are not just talking about it, but we're being about it. To make the shift from being a renter to an owner. I'm not here to put anybody down. I'm not. I promise you, I'm not. There's possibly some people here tonight that you like this church. You, you love what God is doing. You, you, you love what's happening. You love the services. You love what's taking place. But, and, and you're renting it, but you haven't taken ownership of it yet. You look at this as the church. No, 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 no. It's your church. <laughs> it's our church. That's not the pastors. That's our pastors. Those are our leaders. Those are our coaches. We take ownership. See, what you and I value, that's what we'll contribute towards. How we spend our finances. How we give of our time and our talent. That, 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 that's an indication of what we value. And if you and I are going to do mega things in this time, we need some people that are going to jump all the way in. Not ankle deep, waisty, but all the way in. Say, so I'm going all the way in. There's no time for plan B. Some people have plan B. They have alternatives. If, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to go here. And, and if this church doesn't work out, I'm going to go here. No, no, no. If this V group doesn't work out, I'm going to go to this V group. I mean, you jump around from leader to leader, disciple to disciple. No, no, no. If God called you here, stand firm. Stand firm. So this is my house. I'm internalizing the vision. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to help make sure that the team is successful as the worship team can make their way. It's time to cut the nets. 
We got to cut the nets. It's championship time. We are not pretenders. We're not just contenders. We are champions. This is a house of champions. Year after year after year after year, since 1967, we have been cutting the nets. We got to continue to all do our part collectively. It's not about individual accolades. It's about collective greatness. Collectively, everybody doing their part and saying, God, whatever you need of me, I'm willing to do it. Shift my mindset. Shift my mentality. Let me, let, let me be focused on you. Let, let, let me be selfless, not selfish. Let me, what, what, whatever you're giving me, I, I put my trust in you. It's time to cut the nets. It's championship time. Well, you got to see it. Do you see it? Do you believe it? We're going to go to double services soon. We're going to go to double services soon, and we're going to pack that out. We might have to go to triple. I don't know what's going to but God is going to bring expansion and explosion, but we need some team members that say, Pastor, I got your back. This is not a ministry built off a personality. This is a vision that we all come together. It's a plurality of leadership. And we're not just believing for nominal growth addition. We're believing for multiplication. And it's going to happen if we all buy in. Say, I'm going to join the team, the winning team. I'm going to put on my jersey day in and day out. That's about the name on the front, not the name on the back. Victory Outreach Mother Church. And I'm going to do my part. Let's all stand at this time. Time to cut the nets. God has called you and I to do great things. He truly has. But you have to see it. You got to allow God to lead you. You got to take heed to instruction. You got to be willing to work hard. Continue to build team chemistry. And to be willing to go the extra mile. Lift up your hands right there where you're at. Oh, we worship you, Father. If you're here tonight and you're saying, I am going to cut the nets, I'm going to have that generous spirit, that I'm going to leave everything behind and follow Jesus, follow the master, join the winning team. If that's you, come to the altar right now. Come to the altar right now. Allow God to do something new in your life. Allow him to shift your mentality to see what God wants to do in this season.
Yes, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you glory, God. Have your way in this place. Those that are watching online, let the Holy Spirit move upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. We glorify you, God. We magnify you, Lord. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Oh, you're worthy, God. Got to press on. Press on. Never give up. Press on. Press in. You never give in. You never give up. You never turn back. You just keep going forward. Keep moving forward. Keep moving ahead. God is on your side. God is able to give you wind beneath your wings to fly over the trial. You're not a loser. You're a winner. You're not defeated. You have victory. That's why we're victory outreach. You got to start believing it. You're more than a conqueror. You're not just a conqueror. You're more than one. In your marriage, as a father, as a mother, 
as a Christian, as an employee, as an owner of a business, you're called to win. You're called to go big. Mega. Woo. Shake it off, all the junk. Shake off those chains. Walk in peace. Walk in harmony with the Holy Spirit. If God be for you, who could be against you? Ooh, hallelujah. So break it off. Break the chain. In Jesus' name, we break it. As Xavier was speaking, I, I was so impressed by the part where he talks about the marathon. And I, I, I'm hurting just listening to him, like I'm feeling the pain. And then they talk about hitting the wall. Hit the wall. And it happens even in the home, right? You get to that third month, you say, oh, or the first month, you're trying to get through the wall. Like, uh, then the second month, you get through it. The third month, you get through it. I was in the home too. The first three months were the hardest months. Remember another time I was um, pitching against Covina High School, South Hills. And I was pitching against one of the best in the league. And I went 13 innings. Those days and those days, they didn't count the pitches. <laughs> Usually they count the pitches to save your arm. But I just kept pitching. I, I, the coach would say, are you okay? You want to go another one? I go, yeah, give me that ball. Until the sun went down, we had to close the game. We, we ended in a tie. But I didn't give up. I said, I'm going to keep my, my arm was hurting. It was hurting badly. But I wanted to win that game. He wanted to finish that race. He said, I can't show my face until I finish the race. Yeah, that's a good line right there, huh? That's a rap, rap to hook. I can't show my face until I finish the race, huh, Rocky? <laughs> You're called to win. You know what? The, the, the devil wants to make you feel like a loser all the time. He wants you to walk in regret. Like, oh, I, you know, I've never won anything. I've never finished anything. No, you're finishing this one. You're finishing this race. Not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of the almighty God. You are a finisher. When I was watching box, he was just like, boom, man. He's just, we call him the mongoose. Let's go after them. By the way, I told my mom, my dad, I was just there with him earlier, that you finished that race. And I said, you should sponsor him for Run for Hope. So you send them a video. They're ready to do it. You just got to send it to them. They don't know. They, they could be a big donor. Trust me. But you never quit. You never quit. You just keep on moving. You just keep on moving. You keep on moving. You keep on moving. And then don't stress yourself out all the time. Be a person of worry. Oh, just settle into his peace. God, you're with me. Guaranteed heaven. Because you died for me, Jesus. I accepted you as my Savior. And I have no worries because you're, you're in charge of my life. You're the Lord of my life. And when you walk in that, the worry begins to subside and and I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of worries I have to go through with people and things and bills, big bills to pay. And I'm sure he has worries with a little baby right there. Um, but everyone has their challenges. So instead of thinking that God's, you know, not there, he's there for you. But you got to depend on him. I mean, depend on him. Amen. Clap your hands. Powerful word. Thank you, Xavier. Take us out with some up. Don't forget this week. Bring people Sunday, okay? Bring people. God bless you. You've been better than good to me.